So we will open the meeting of the ARPA Applications Review Committee uh, by rising for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to tilt the agenda a little bit because we have applicants from um, Bananas Ice Cream here, so we're going to take care of a little preliminary business and then jump to the end of the list and, and uh, discuss the bananas on the screen and if you could just have to stay around for the whole for the, you know for the whole meeting but there are some preliminary matters i want to take care of um, first on the agenda is the criteria for scoring and assessing non-profit applications we're going to move that back that's going to be quickly fine um there are some Quick updates that I want to give you. Yeah, may or may not have a bearing on tonight. Um, first of all, when you go through these applications, and it's particularly the business applications, and you see PPP uh, um, grants awarded to a business. They do not appear on tax returns. The PPP money is tax exempt. So when you go through the tax returns and for whatever reason that you do to find out, you know, to make your own analysis about hardship or economic impact, so on and so forth. And you also see further down the application that that business got PPP funds. Remember, add that in if that's what you want to do, but it doesn't show up on the tax return. So take it into account um, if, if, you, if you want, you know, when we, when we go through the business application. Uh, the business application. Um, ARPA funds are taxable, whatever, if that's relevant. Uh, with respect to the agendas going forward, um, I've asked Jesse before Wednesday's meeting to scramble um, the list of applicants, keeping separate the nonprofits and uh, the business applications per our consensus at the last meeting. Now, all of the business applications will not be uploaded by then. They will be probably by Friday, but at least at, uh, at Wednesday's meeting, we will uh, have a sample of what that scrambling looks like. And then after that, we will set the agenda for the order of the, the final version of the scramble. And I've asked Jesse when the scram, when everything is uploaded and he has a final scramble, um, he'll email it around or I will email it around and, and that's, how, that's how we work. Yeah. So you had said initially to have it ready to go on Wednesday, but not all the applications will be in. Probably won't be in until Friday end of the day. So would it be okay when I, I would, unless you want to give me the final uh, tentative number, because I can randomize numbers. No, I would say just scramble what you have. They're going to be uploaded fast and furious starting tonight. And as you go on the okay. portal, more and more will be appearing. So okay. uh, if we have to adjust that plan, we'll adjust it. And that's what it looks like now. Okay. Um, that by Wednesday, we should have a lot more than we have today. Okay. And um, that's, uh, that's that part of it. Um, also at the last, meeting I was asked the question about when applicants uh, may expect to see a check and I, and I gave sort of a detailed answer. I'm going to review part of that now because um, there might have been probably is some confusion as to what I meant and things change every day. You'd be surprised uh, how fast things change but the, the steps to getting a check um, go something uh, like this. Uh, after we do our work, 
Uh, the committee will send up, I'll send up a memo uh, to government and indicating what applications have been approved and what applications have not been approved. After that, it's out of our hands as to how fast the check is issued and the order of things that are, are going to happen. So for example, tonight, uh, if we approve any applications uh, tomorrow or the next few days, um, I'll, I'll probably wait at this point until Thursday because we have three meetings right in a row. Um, I'll send a report up to government and say these applications have been approved and then someone in government has got to take it from there. Um, the mayor may take the initiative and say, okay, um, he'll recommend them. He may not take that first step. Uh, the council may want to take the initiative and weigh in. But sooner or later, the law department is going to need to draft individual contracts that each applicant is going to have to sign. And that's going to take some time for the law department to get that organized and, and either call in the applicants or something get together and um, explain the contract, so on and uh, so forth. That doesn't necessarily mean that a check is cut right when you sign the contract or in the final step of this joint decision making uh, with the council and the mayor, you know, sharing responsibility for decision making. Um, the comptroller and the law department uh, need to consider whether the, these are uh, grants that are cash up front and the applicant spends the money for the contract and returns the money they don't have to spend or whether it's a reimbursement grant whereby uh, the applicant spends the money first and then upon proof of payment in accordance with the contract, they get reimbursed. Or it's a vendor pay system where uh, the town agrees to pay the applicant's vendor. Let's say you're buying a thing. Um, the, the town may opt to pay the vendor of that thing and that way the grant is, is uh, fulfilled. And it could be a mix of all those. It's not in our job jar, not in our portfolio, not our responsibility, not for us to recommend that it's strictly the business of government, but the question was asked and people want to know what are, you know, what's going on. So I'm weighing in the best I can to the extent of my knowledge as to how that's going to work. So my next question to all of you is where did I confuse you? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to let anyone be confused about that. Does that sort of cover the, Bases on it? Okay. Good. So, uh, and hold on one second. Let me work here on which application? Let me take. Okay, you're actually first on the list, I believe. So, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take up that first, but preliminarily, if everyone could get on their screen, the criteria I sent out today for business applications. And I've got to get mine up on my screen, so. The screenshot of the required documentation. The required documentation for businesses is sent today at 12.43 in the afternoon. Does everyone... Does everyone have that? That's the one I just I have a screen share right now. I have a screen share. I think this is the one you're looking for. Okay, I wonder what interfered with my system here. <laughs> so I'm saying, wow, what the vice you, chair. Whatever happened there. No, I got it. You got it? Except I need to unlock it for one second. Okay. Um, the application process, including the requirement that applicants not only fill out their application completely, but that they also attach to their application or provide, you know, um, for the, the window of opportunity to close certain documentation. 
And that documentation um, was a completed application, a copy of the Department of Revenue Services status letter. And I'm reading this not just for your benefit necessarily, but for everyone who may be here in the audience. We've got five people. Six? Five. Okay. And uh, people watching at a later date. Uh, you know, when we talk about required documentation, what are we talking about? Uh, it also says that uh, part of the document documentation is a copy of the Wallingford Business Trade Name Certificate but only if it's a doing business as and it's filed with a town clerk. And then a CPA issued profit or loss statement for 2019, 2020, and 2021, or tax returns with redacted personal information like the social security number, things like that. And the last one is documentation supporting the funding request. Self-evident what it says, but, uh, but obviously what that means is if you, for example, put an application in and you wanted 5,000 for a thing, the committee needs to know what that thing really costs and therefore some sort of a documentation supporting the grant request needs to be attached. In some cases, we will see that this material is not provided. Sometimes it's very carefully provided. And we're going to have to deal in the course of the evening uh, as to how we handle uh, applications where all the required documentation is not there. It's just a factor of life going forward. So, my friend, I thought we were paying the consultants to make sure that. No, that's okay. no, uh, that's not, that's not, that's not, um, she, she has, the consultant has passed along applications to us where applicants have not provided all that. Uh, well, they, they for, may have. Hold on, let me, yep. let me just finish. The application's job is to assure ARPA compliance and not and not deal with local compliance as, and I'm glad you asked the question because it raises another issue that I want to cover again. The, the consultant screens these for federal, for compliance with federal law, but we have our own local criteria, which is more restrictive than ARPA. So um, if there's an application filed, which is arguably completed or completed up for something, we very well may get it, but that doesn't mean that it is automatically deemed complete. I mean, many examples where in fact it's not. So I, I hope I answered your question. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, you, you may have answered the question from your perspective, sure. but um, we at length have discussed how it's their job to make sure. Yeah, but I'm and not going to get into it. And they said if the applications were incomplete, that they will reach out to the applicant to make sure that we have everything. Yeah. So I'm. You know. Take it up with a consultant or take it up with the council, whatever you want to do, but it's not for tonight. We have well, it is potentially for tonight if, if there are applicants for tonight, have, they're we, not going to we, We're going to discuss them. Okay. I said five minutes ago, we will discuss in the course of the evening how we handle applications where the documentation is not attached. At that point, we can, we'll discuss the options of how you personally handle that. But we are faced with this situation, so we're going to have to handle the applications. And when we get to that, we'll, you know, when we get to that point, we'll decide how we're going to handle the unbottom. Is an issue we can't agree on something? Is, is, can we table uh, a application? If we just can't get some type of agreement. All right. So, so we get an answer. So we're getting bogged down. So here's, here's, let's that, we're, we'll discuss it briefly now, and then we're going to move ahead. If there's an application that doesn't have the required documentation, some members of the committee may feel they should be uh, denied for that reason and that reason alone. One choice, maybe yours. There's 10 of us and 10 different, 10 different positions on it. It may fall into the score and say, no, we're not going to deny it automatically, but the score will be reduced because maybe the... Um, the burden of proof that the applicant has to fit within the criteria 
uh, the burden of proof is not carried or not carried as persuasively. And if you had this material, maybe it would have helped, but you don't have it, so it fits into the scoring. I'm not going to be tabling anything uh, because we're going to be tabling probably more than 50% of the applications or some huge percentage. So we're going to put whatever we have in front of us, what we have, and when it comes to voting or deciding on how to handle it, we'll work it out. And it's it's coming up tonight, so in about five minutes. I have to be able to feel very clear about that yeah. procedurally, yeah. you know, in terms of. I don't know if you this way. Federal government, it's okay, federal government, <laughs> and of course, it meets the threshold of criteria at that level. Was the council aware of that? I was just wondering, just curious. Was okay. the council aware of that? Yeah, well, we would be getting applications that may have been some omissions in terms of our. For no reason, no reason why they. No reason why. They no reason why that's what Here's I mean. Here's why. Here's why. We're just getting these applications in last week and this week. Understood. That, They're not going to meet the middle of February. And just from, so um, you know that's no a, that's 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 why. And, uh, just but from, we're going to we're going to proceed with our business. Exactly. Yeah. And if they don't want to appropriate uh, money because an application is incomplete, that's their business. You know, we just send up the report. I yeah. just want to add, just for value and very crisply, very quickly, if an application at the PP level, and I know PPP level was not completed correctly and precisely, mm -hmm. it would not be up for consideration whatsoever. Just we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll be, um, That's just, we'll, yeah, be anxiously, we'll be anxiously waiting your way and when we come around. I, th I thought it'd be as sufficient as possible. Great, gotcha. No, I, I don't think it's fair. You know, we set criteria. Some people did comply with the criteria. Um, just the time to discuss it. The no, I'm just saying. May, the first application may, you know, we're discussing it in 10 yeah. minutes. Let's yeah. get to some that. I'm going to get a bottle of water. Sure. I agree. I don't know what the table is called. Exactly. Tens of thousands. I think their their task, no, although their task task was to fulfill the federal guidelines. No, that was their, their they came to us and they said that they would review the application and go back to the applicant and they were able to. They that's, that's the case. Yeah. Back, 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 so it's 100%. And I know they went back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, and, and honestly, hold, hold on. We're not getting anywhere. We're not getting anywhere. Sure. In many cases, the consultant went back and tried and tried and tried. Um, I can't I say this in, in this particular application, that's what happened. You know, if you want to bring it up at a council meeting and go all through that, fine. But this is not the place to go through that. Mike. We have applications we've got to decide we're done. Yeah. In the event that we abs uh, abstain, from that vote, it will then come up for reconsideration at a future date, or that the application will come up at a future date, or the application is in limbo. What happens at that point? Seeing the if, scenario, if there's an if inadequate we, documentation, if we all abstain because of inadequate documentation, then it, the report it, goes up. The report goes up, but it didn't wasn't approved. Well, I mean, we're not under any regulatory timelines to act on this in the sense like I'm thinking of my world where, you know, PNZ, you have 65 days to act on a site plan and you're on day 64. So if we have something that we can't, we feel that we can't act on, we can table action. We we'll just take the majority of the, of the group to the table. Look through your applications. You will see how many there are that are incomplete. We can kick the can down the road till July or June or good luck May while the consultant goes back and tries to scramble and rustle up the missing documentation or we can decide it based on what we have. And if you in, if you if the application is incomplete, give them a failing grade. And if there's enough failing grades, the application is not approved on the merits. Look, this requirement has been on the website since October. There's been webinars, so on and so forth. In some cases, the, 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 the consultant has tried to bird dog. I think in most cases, they tried to bird dog and, and collect the material. Not always been successful. Time is up. You may not agree with that, but give a score accordingly, you know. Um, but, you know, we're, we're starting our process and uh, I'm going to score what we have. All right, let's, let's move on here. So, what we agreed to do
was to um, review applications uh, one at a time. And um, I volunteer to take the first swing for the next three nights at the applications that are on the agenda. Um, the second swing, I'll ask for volunteers who want to take the second swing after I take the first pass at it. And whoever takes a second swing thereafter will just go in rotation, everyone weigh in. Uh, we'll go around the table twice and hopefully by then, um, not hopefully, after that will be time to score. Um, you all have scoring matrices, matrixes in front of you, I hope. I have extras here. Everyone's got a score sheet? Okay. So after that, so you're ready to put your score on, your, your score down, we'll call for that. Um, label your score sheet with the name of the applicant, the date, and initial it as yours. And score them. We'll pass them all uh, up front. And um, Bob and Amy will read off the name. And, they, and, and after you score, total them up. Total them up so there's a total at the bottom. We'll pass them all up front, and Bob and Amy will read off the name and the score. And Jesse is going to run the adding machine and, uh, and then make an average. And uh, on these applications, it was decided uh, last time that scores of 69 or lower will not be approved. 70 or above will be. That was that two hour debate we had last time we met. And then the score sheets uh, with Jesse's adding machine tape will be all stapled together and put into one of those vanilla envelopes. And if you guys could just label the envelope with the name of the applicant, and that'll be the public record that'll be filed with the, with the town clerk. And that's how it'll. All right, we all on board. So Amy Cakes uh, LLC. And here's what I see here. Um, actually, I'm going to start with the criteria, the evaluation criteria, the one that says pass fail. Uh, the required row, the very first row at the top. It says that it starts out the proposed project. And let me just stop there because project is somewhat definitional. Um, use the dictionary definition. It's not a term of art. It's not a statutory word. It's not complicated. Whatever the dictionary says, that's what it means. There are several you know, definitions of the dictionary, but use your common sense as to what that means in this context, the context of the town of Wallingford's ARPA applications. Um, the my personal opinion, so I'm not lecturing, I'm just, I agreed to go first and take a swing. So this is my swing at it. The word project um, means in context, something more than a than general cash assistance. Um, you kind of know it when you see it. Um, sometimes it's buying a thing. Sometimes it's hiring a contractor to do something for you. And sometimes it's buying equipment, so on and so forth. But in context of the application where they want, you know, estimates and a timeline and, and things like that, um, I think most, if not all the applications are, are projects, but you may see some that we haven't seen more, where they're not, they're just looking for a cash injection. And then the next term, it says the proposed project will address the negative economic and or health impacts due to COVID couple of thoughts there. The word address means synonym, means deals with. So does the project deal with the negative economic or health impacts? That injects a, a notion of proportionality. I'm not I didn't make that up myself. I didn't think of that's what I meant. I didn't Think that term up myself. It's actually in the federal rules, the interim rule. The, um, you know, the federal government talks about proportionality and why? Because the first part of the analysis is what was the economic impact? And let's say the economic impact was $10. The notion is you wouldn't give $100 to address a $10 impact. That 
becomes a windfall. And the, there is no bright line there uh, between what is a what is a proportional measure that addresses COVID. You've got to use your own judgment, our own common sense. But the notion of proportionality is in there. And obviously, the, the negative economic impact um, is supposed to be due to COVID. And sometimes that's very hard to discern. Um, Nonprofits and businesses can go up or down for a lot of reasons, um, but we just have to do the best we can. But I consider this a low bar. Uh, if, if you're running track and the hurdles, so this is a low hurdle. And um, personally, I give the benefit of the doubt to the applicants if it's plausible I and mean, if it's arguable, because the high hurdle is coming up with a metro rows of scoring criteria. Um, one second. I'm going to leave my seat for a minute, and there's a couple of applicants in the audience, and I'm just going to hand those out to your, Mike. You can do that. There's two because I think there's two applicants. Yeah. Our name? Um, Dana Pickett. Dana Pickett. Dana. Oh, for three. Okay. Somebody. So, thank you. So we're starting with uh, Amy Pigs LLC. I sort of went over the first row. Um, the, the general concept of, um, um, of a project to address the negative economic impacts, I, I, I think we have a proportionality uh, problem, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Uh, it may or may not be fatal, uh, but um, there's, if we uh, look at the, uh, the first page of the application, uh, down at the bottom, um, with respect to gross income, and, and the financial backup, um, that's sort of weighing on my mind uh, as to whether the request of um, 25,000 is proportionate to what might may be identified as the economic impact from COVID. The, um, the gross went up about mm -hmm. six times in 2021 from 2020 and about 15 times from 2019. This, this is in, it's sort of in the nature of a startup. So 2019 may not be may not be a proper baseline. I got to think about that. But, um, so the first scoring role, which is worth 30 points, is the degree to which the COVID pandemic created or contributed to the um, demonstrated and clearly described financial adversity that the business is experiencing. Um, and the nature of the of the business is a uh, owner operated uh, bakery. And as I recall my review of this, I think it started out um, with the proprietor um, starting a business in a home, and I think they more recently moved to uh, 236 North Column. And they, they, uh, they say on the application, it was a one full time equipment employee at the shoe that came in the owner operator and is, is trying to put together a successful full, full service bakery specializing in cakes, cupcakes, and gift treats. The application says, um, like many businesses, um, they had trouble during the COVID months um, and they've seen a hike in operational expenses, which is more fully described. I'm not trying to make a complete description here, um, but it is more fully described. And 
But can I just, I, I'm, I'm not looking to, I just, am I to understand that you've gotten asked line one? I've you've identified a project. I gave, yeah, let, let me, yeah, I, what I said, I'll, I'll just go back. I said, you said something about possibly fatality. Well, proportionality is something I want to discuss a little bit further down the road, but okay. that aside, um, I think it gets over the required top row that doesn't have a score. And um, I see a negative economic impact. I think it's logical to me that it was caused by the pandemic. Um, I see enough of a, um, of a, of a project here, uh, but um, hold on one second. Just the van. Yeah. yeah, this is the van. This is the van. So there's two different categories of requests. One is for a van, which is obviously a thing. And the other is for operational expenses, pretty much. Um, let me just have my eye fall on it again. You start preparing for 10 and they begin to blow. So I, I, I don't want to go on my memory here. Um, they've seen a major hike in their expenses. Um, funds will help offset those costs and, and help the business grow. Uh, and in addition, they're talking about a four-cylinder van to deliver cakes at a much lower cost. So the, you know, the application says one and van is obviously a thing clearly as a project. The other is operational expenses, and I'm not so convinced that it's that it qualifies as a uh, as a project as the town of Wallingford um, means it to be. Um, but I'm sort of on the fence on that until we around the table but yes i wanted to get by that first row i think we now begin to go down to the scoring row so therefore um because the um my gross did, Ma yeah i thought that we had decided at the previous meeting that we would do our due diligence prior to coming here yeah. after doing the vetting and come with an outcome and present it with the outcome and i'm getting score. there but what i want to do is present the Instead rationale dissecting and, it. And, and, well i want to dissect it in this case because Seeing as this is the first application of the first night, uh, not only the applicants watching, but the town of Wallington wants to know if we have a rational basis for what we're doing here. And I'd rather add more detail than less detail to have everyone explain the criteria so it, so it doesn't seem arbitrary. So maybe I'm going overboard, forgive me. No, and as okay. we go you know, through more and more application, this will trim down. But this is really the first time when any of these concepts has been discussed. So I wanted to fully flesh it out but it's yours to agree or disagree. Appreciate yeah, that's, it. Yeah, that's all. I just want to know. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's why I'm taking this time. Um, so the degree to which that uh, um, the project addresses the, the uh, clearly described financial adversity due to COVID, um, this is not going to give a strong score. Um, it may, it'll get some point, but it's hard to tell uh, with the gross increasing as it is, um, whether this is a situation of financial adversity or not. So I, I want to wait and see what other, what other people say. Um, the degree to which it is demonstrated is a 40 to 40 point rule that the applicant's proposed project will assist the business in long term recovery. Um, a van might. Um, operational expenses covering one year, I'm not sure that that's what is contemplated by long-term recovery. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a problem. Um, and the documentation, I did not see on documentation for what a van costs. And um, I didn't see the tax returns for 2021, which would might have clarified the financial adversity issue. So the last bottom row, the documentation is not gonna get um, strong points because of that lack of documentation. Sorry, the last row is timeline. Um, that's okay, the timeline isn't too bad, but um, that's, where I'm, that's where I stand on it. So. I'm going to stop there. Who wants to take the ne next swing at it? And then we'll go around and each one of us two shots at it. Bob, you're next. So then, are you going to take the next swing? I'll take the next swing. So after that, it will be you, Craig, Carl, and so on around the table. And um, and we'll have the second shot. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm going to proceed. But if it doesn't meet our problem, 
can we continue with the application because it doesn't meet ARPA requirements? So it is presumed that it meets ARPA because the consultant passed it on to us. It is not presumed it meets local criteria. Local criteria are more stringent. Well, I was under the impression that ARPA, maybe I'm wrong, that you have to be in business in 2019. Well, that's, um, you have that's to look at the, the score it the way you want. Well, but local criteria no, says that. I'm not that. saying that's a local. I'm saying that's an ARPA requirement yeah. that they have to be in business in 2019. So if it doesn't meet ARPA, can, can the town legally give out the money to something that doesn't meet ARPA requirements? But the incorporation is that it's had in 2019. So it's October 2019. Well, there's, there's no, for the majority of 2019, there's ambiguity in the statement. Of just 2019. I thought the rule was January of 2019. It's January 19. I'm not talking about the tax town talk, I'm talking about the feds are talking about. I don't care about what the feds are talking about, and here's why. What the feds are talking about is screened by UHY consultant. It's now passed down to us to apply our judgment on local criteria that says you're supposed to be in business. From the beginning of January, if you if you believe, I don't want to debate, you know, consultant ARPA. If you believe it doesn't meet the local criteria, then score it low. Uh, and I'm I'm just going based on what the I know we have these requirements here that that are looking, but based yeah. on what the council was saying, they wanted this money to be given out to people who to qualify. So with that. Backing material. <clears throat> That's why I think that I'd like to be able to go back to the applicants and ask for the backing material. Mm -hmm. Ask for the backing material if you really want that backing material and not kill, not knock them out right off the bat. Is that what you want to do? I'm just one person. But, but, but we're going to call for your store. So, um... you know, but. I mean, that's something that I thought that, and I know that they had gone, UHY had gone to certain group of people and asked for more material and didn't go to others and ask for material. Okay. So you're done with your I'm done. You're done. Yeah, right? I don't understand this. We can so, deal. I mean, in all frankness, I have a problem with line one. Yeah. And I'm centering on proposed projects. We've already said that operational expenses are not a project under the sphere that we're dealing with. And then I look at the written statement and it says possibly purchase a van, which is a, it's not, I'm going to use this money to purchase a van, right? So question number one, you know, will the proposed project, I'm having trouble putting those two puzzle pieces together. So, you know, I too getting past that um, portion of this, I have severe problems with the two fifteen point boxes because I really have no budget um, and I really have no timeline. So, um, you know, the first, the third certainly doesn't reach that. Um, so, I mean, those are my comments. I did not come here with scores. I wanted to have this discussion and see where we were and then, you know, but I have serious I, problems. With the I think you're right. I have a tentative score because I collect my thoughts and I moralize what I was thinking. And I have a tentative score subject to whatever you're saying. So that's what I did. Yeah, I just said when I was looking at the backup for the taxes, the 2019 thing, um, I think it had a bottom line of 20,000. That didn't seem to meet what was represented in the application. Um, so, Craig, am I to understand that? Hold on one sec. You're yeah. going next. Okay. So, keep your powder dry. <laughs> yeah, I, I reviewed the tax document. I, I do concur that the stuff isn't all there, but the one that was there, it appeared like the numbers didn't match up. So, you know, that doesn't, there's already faults in the the scoring as we get there, but that's all I wanted to say. Um, I, I just think this was a weak application for all the things that Craig just mentioned. I think it barely passed the required box one where it says the proposed project. Uh, I did give it a score. It 
deserve the score to me, and they scored it a 61. Steve, you raise that Jack, up. Jacqueline, I have the score in each, in each, in each spot. Do you want the score in each? No, in each score, but I was thinking that you would hold your judgment until everyone went around twice and then we would. I know, I mean, do it, do it, do it. I can wait. I, yeah, no, it's, it's purely up to you. It was a very weak application from top to bottom. It lacked a lot of substance and tangibility to it. Um, it was not well documented. And go, and I, and opinion, if it doesn't meet the threshold and, and the completeness test, it should not move forward. Jacqueline? I'm also in agreement um, with everything that everyone said. Chris? Okay. Chris? Starting in 2019, the latter part of it um, would, to me, tend to discount the first year's numbers. Uh, we're weighing that all together. It's a startup. It's a startup piece. I'm not sure overall the tax return dollar amounts don't match, which is a significant um, omission, error, or, or whatever. Mike, yeah, I mean, I, I'm like Carl. I'm, I've scored already. I gave it a 40. Um, I think it's it wasn't a passing application. I was too generous. You were, we were. I guess you're the cupcake, and I'll be. Um, I mean, and Craig, to your comment, the question about the two the two sections that are 15, a degree of which the proposed budget fits the appropriate supported documentation. I gave it a five in the sense you have an activity, but you have nothing to back it up. Uh, you know, other applications we received, you know, the, the, the applicant provided like a, um, a spec from manufacturer for equipment she was purchasing. We were like, okay, that's tangible. I get it. She did her research. She contacted it. Makes sense. This one, on the other hand, was missing that extra element. Understood. Jesse? Um, uh, I, I, I concur with the... Uh, the, the lack of the, the details around um, like you know the estimates or specs or anything like that I felt was was a was a flaw in the application. Um, it also only really provided 19 and 20 tax returns. It didn't really provide 21, so it was difficult to see where the 21 came from. Uh, I mean I know that there was a there, there was an additional document that was shared that kind of gave some information, but you can only really see. Um, 19 and 20, um, and uh, you know, I, I think if we're sort of thinking about sort of the completeness of the application itself, um, I, I do think it meets it does meet the criteria that it, you know it would address the economic impact. Um, but you know, just going forward from there, I uh, I kind of uh, echo the sentiment really. Any? Um, similar to what others said, um, I had difficulty with the. Uh, Lack of proposed budget for the project and um, you know, suggestion of work for the project, but not any additional work on detailing the project. Um, and similar to what I said, um, you know, I recognized that the application stated they were closed for a year, um, but there weren't any details on you know, planning to impact the gallery or what aspects of the so we're going around a second time. Don't feel obligated if you said all you need to say. Just hit it pass, and uh, and, uh, and we'll get right to the swan. Bob, anything? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, did you have any comments? It's what I oh. meant. Second time around the table. I promised everyone two shots. Emphatically, I failed. All right. So that you pass. Anything to add? Okay. Time to score. Mike and Jesse, nothing. Nothing to add. Okay. Time to score on the first on the first row for yes or no or something there, and then the rest of the numerical scores. And then we're going to hand them in to uh, Amy and Bob and uh, call out the. Uh, get your name on it. Yeah, put, you got to put your name on it. You want us initial? Yeah, Nick, initial. I put Mike B on one. Well, it's up to you if you want to do this. Sure. 
And so Jesse, when they're calling out the scores, we need to be on the adding machine and then make an average so we know the average score. Are you compiling? I'm all set. You're, you got 10? One, two, nine. Yeah, there's not some people here. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, no, but I'm six. Yeah, no, yeah, correct. You should have nine. No. You have nine? No, I don't have three. Set it again? Yeah. What are you missing, Bob? Eight, nine. You got all of it. Come on, Bob. They were there. All right, so um, we call out. 31. You want to be a record, call out a name and the total score, and yes, you will run the table. Wadinsky, 31. Ames, I don't know, can't tell who that is, probably. What? Jackson is 45. Wadin is 40. Gross is 45. Amy Walsh is 50. Reason is 35. This time is 20. Reynolds is 55. And I guess this is yours, Carl. Oh, yeah. Okay, 61. I couldn't figure that out. No, no. So I'm, I'm not sure we said this, but yeah, the, the average score has to be 60, 70 or above. What, what is the average? 42.4. 42.4. Four. Amy, uh, uh, yeah, if you could put 42.4 on the envelope, yeah, on the outside, and the name of the applicant and the date. And put the tape, Jesse's tape in there. One thing to make clear to the applicant, this is final. This, this is probably going to the council. Am I right, sir? What's going to the council, what's going to the council, what we discussed last time, the report and what passed on the date. Yeah. Going to government. Going to government for. Yeah. Like, what's this? You have to think about which branch it's going to. Yep. Yeah, it's a good idea, Jesse. Okay, we all set to move on. Um, the next one's going to be. Um, Excuse me, Mike. I understand that we are not allowed to speak here. You're not. But I am going to just put this on record to find it well, highly inappropriate that you have all sat here and prejudged my application without actually asking me what my operational expenses are. This is a client of business that is struggling and has been struggling during COVID. I think it's just wildly. Inappropriate. And his comment about being a cupcake of the process is inappropriate. This is our livelihood. And once again, I realize that I'm not supposed to be speaking, but to deny my application without knowing exactly what I am committed for is just not fair. It's not fair to me to have that opportunity to explain to you or to give you the things that that I could. Did you not ask for that in the application? So let me let me stop you for a minute. And um, out of out of I, I understand you're disappointed and certainly not happy. I get that. Um, but I need to say, Mr. to you and everyone else that comes after you, that just as I showed respect for you to let you go on, everyone coming in needs respect for the rules. Otherwise, we're going to have to change the rules or do something. But we're not going to get into a situation we can't, where there's a give and take and you know some sort of a protest. It's not what we have in mind, and it's not fair to the rules, and to some degree, it's not fair to us. We're doing a difficult job, and we're calling it as we see it. Uh, we've been given criteria, and we have we've read the applications, we've read the backup, we're applying.
final criteria and the decision has to be made. But the rules need to be respected. So, yeah. The next one that we're going to do is MMK Inc. DBA Bernalization. Which one is it? It's the last one on the agenda, but we're moving that up because they are here. Bananas ice cream? Bananas ice cream. Oh, okay. You got it in front of you? Wait, say that one more time. I'm sorry. Banana? Okay. So here's what I see. Uh, I'm going to go to some of the financials first. Um, uh, I see an application that is um, does not have the, the tax return for the documentation attached. There is um, uh, looks like a, a QuickBooks with the equivalent attached um, to it, but the application calls for tax returns, and there is a qualitative difference between. QuickBooks and, and tax returns. Um, so we have that um, we have that problem. Um, looking at some of the financials, I see that in um, 2019 um, sales were uh, 181,000. 2020 they went up to 228,000 according to the backup. This business, this business didn't have any of that. This business, they acquired. When, you, when it comes to you, okay. No, I when it comes to you, okay. All right, we have a like a the D and I rule. Do not interrupt. Okay. And in your case, do not resuscitate. Sure. So um, let me just, just get through it, and okay. then when it comes time to you, pick sure. my comments apart. Sure. All right. Fair point. Perhaps. Agreed. Without making the representation. Therefore, yeah. therefore, looking at the backup, sure. uh, I will go on. In 2021, um, the gross went up again to 264, 214, according to the information we have. Uh, there was a loss in 2019, a, uh, a modest profit in uh, 2020, they got PPP of 13,333 down, uh, which does not show on the tax returns if they had them. And then in 2021, they had another loss. Um, the trying to figure out what's going on here as best they could with the, with the financials. And part of it is that the expenses uh, from 2019 to 2021 um, went, up, um, went up dramatically, um, even though the, the, the gross went up, the expenses went up also. Uh, that could be caused by a lot of things. I mean, it, it could be inflation. Inflation doesn't necessarily mean COVID related, but it is a component of COVID and, and inflation, I believe. Um, the, the reason for the expenses is, is increases, um, there's some hints in there. Uh, I just, I looked at all of it, but I just made notes on the cost of hard ice cream. Uh, that did go up compared 2019 to 2021. Uh, the taxes are up, the payroll was up, but the payroll could be payment to insiders and it could be the owners that you, you just don't know. Um, so the revenues went up, the expenses went up. Um, in the expenses is in some cases a payment of a loan. Um, and as I go down the ranking on, on the score sheet, the required line I, I gave them, yeah, uh, there was a negative economic impact. It was due to the uh, pandemic. So um, that, that got an okay with me. And now we get into the um, more difficult scoring rows. But, the extent to which the pandemic created the financial adversity, one, you know, adversity seen as um, the revenues went up, losses can occur for a lot of reasons. Um, and it's, it's on the fence. So I'm going to give that row a, me, a medium score, not strong, not terribly weak, but there's a lot, there's some doubt there. Um, the next row, the 40 pointer, the degree to which it is demonstrated that the applicant's proposed project will assist the business in recovery. Um, one of the things they plan to do with the money is buy an ice cream cart. Uh, 
and if I understand what that is, it helps them become more mobile in their sales and their events that they can service. Um, the life expectancy of a, of a mobile cart is well beyond you know, operational expenses for a year. So I see that as sort of a long-term, long-term kind of a project and kind of the use of the money. Um, so on that row, um, I'm anticipating subject to thoughts that everyone has a, a pretty decent score on that. Uh, the last two rows, um, the documentation isn't there, um, and the um, the timeline, you know, it's not so complicated that they can't get it done. It's a maximum 15 points. Um, I'm going to give them some points for the last row because it's, I don't think what they want to do with it is convoluted. Um, I think my total score is going to be somewhere close to the edge of, of not making it, but I, I, I can adjust my thinking if I hear, you know, other, other thoughts. So that's my first swing. Who wants to take a second swing? Um, and we'll to Craig is a second swing and goes to Carl. You're, you're next up and, and around the table. All right. So this business wasn't even created until December of 2021. I glean from the application that this activity may have occurred by a precursor to the current business at this site, and they potentially may have had negative impact. However, they sold the business to the current owner in 2021, and you would, well, I, I can't, I, I guess I could reasonably presume that baked into that was some negative impact. The representation that TTP was given related to this application in 2020 is not to this entity. It was to the prior entity. So under the auspices of ARPA, as I understand it, because this entity did not exist prior to the pandemic, you can't address it. So that's what I see. Carl? Um, Just trying to clarify. I want to confirm the, the inception of the business. I got Concord up. Yeah, online. 12 9 2021. Well, while you're looking at that, um, I skipped over myself, so I'm going to take advantage of the chairman. I'm going to take 20 seconds. Sure. The way I'm looking at it, it's the same business with different owners, and I'm just construing it that way, but you don't have to. It's the same business. They're selling ice cream, and they're there for a while, with different corporate you know, form ownership, but it's basically the same, same thing business. going forward. So, I mean, but do your thing. I mean, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'll pass for now, if I may. Yeah. That means you get one right in there. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, one. Jack, you're up. Uh, when I first reviewed the application, I thought it was very thorough and laid out. It shows, you know, for me, it scored high on most of the evaluation criteria. They provided a lot of information. They gave you know, some new data with what you're going to do with it. And I scored it, but it was just a minute. I didn't hear the last one. I scored it, but they were received the moment. Okay. Chris. So I have five businesses, and going through that, the assumption that their tax returns, uh, their financials, et cetera, are mine um, as a result, and no distinguishing between those as long as the EIN stays the same um, or is absorbed by, by mine and absorbed in there, um, going through that it is considered part of you know, a subsidiary business or part of another business. Um, so what the tax returns would have satisfied that requirement by giving the exact EIN that was used under those tax returns. They are mainstay in the town um, transfer owner as has been fully disclosed. The diversity status of that um, having been changed uh, necessitates um, you know, different uh, SBA designations, et cetera. So, um, just the PL. If you're not running QuickBooks by yourself, the CPA may be the only one who's able to provide uh, the PL for somebody, and those are provided for 19, 20, and 21. So for me, um, it is uh, not as problematic uh, to me in 
the score and with that uh, above his head. I think what you're saying is for you it's not a disqualifier like it might be for Craig. Do I understand? Correct. That? Okay. Mike Lady? So I have the same thoughts on that. I agree. I agree entirely. Um, and, and I think, I mean, it passes, but it's like just passing right by. Just Jesse. in my numbers. Jesse. Um, you know, I, I, I realize, like Mr. said, the main state of town, I realized it changed owners, but it sort of stayed within the family. Um, so it's a long standing business. Uh, I felt that the application itself um, was thorough, uh, explained what they wanted to do and why. I felt that their response as a business to what COVID presented in terms of limited indoor interactions, as well as the ability to go outside and to bring their product elsewhere would do the things that we want to promote the business longer, to be able to do all those things. Um, you know, my only drawback uh, was the sort of the ambiguity of the QuickBooks versus the taxes, but I did see that that was in line, and they actually did list the PPP and the QuickBooks. I think although they listed on the FDA, but they actually did include the 13 PP3. Um, and the last thing I would say was, you know, just it, without without the full disclosure of the estimates and things of where the money came from, but I mean the description that they provided in the application was pretty thorough. So I thought this was a pretty strong application from my perspective. I appreciate Chris's insights on business ownership and transfer and sales and things like that. I appreciate that. Um, I um, saw highly of this application um, project in the, the, the ice cream trailer <clears throat> does address issues that came up during the pandemic and let's just expand people beyond their, their existing footprint. So um, I would say her based on that. Um, the, the lack of documentation for the project is just a detractor, but they just provide a budget, so there is some thought through that. So I appreciate that. that. Um, so I would say we're here to comment. I mean, I like the application, but I didn't like the change of ownership because what was the loss of the new owner? They did, they did not have a the new owner did not have the COVID loss. So here's how you handle that, if I may. Okay. Actually, I didn't mean to phrase it that way. Here's how you may think about handling it if you're so inclined. On the second and third row, you can mark them down because this particular applicant didn't have financial adversity. That ownership right. matters. So that's how one way of handling it that's up to you. Okay. That's, that was my big thing with this application. So, and I mean, that's, but that's, that's the question. That's the question again. Do we look back to, you know, are we looking at these? I know they're not all black and white, but the council has said it had to be 2019. This one wasn't planned. I understand it was a family business sold, but it wasn't the same people. This is multi generational from grandfather to granddaughter. So, I mean, I mean, the application, I understand the business, this is, but that was my only issue. It's just been, what happens when you look down some of the other applications as they come up? Because I've looked at quite a few. The, these, these issues are going to come up yeah, continually. The, the criteria is the business existed in January 2019. That's the criteria. The business existed in January 2019. Not the owner. The business existed in January the 2019 the and entity. is presently operational. I'm just reading the new one. It has a new EIN number. Huh? It has a new EIN number. That's standard. I understand so, that, but it's a new entity. I, I'm just reading the criteria. So, I I the this is your last pass. Yeah, I just, Chris, I, I didn't want to interrupt you when you were talking about the EIN number. What were you saying about that? In the process, depending on like to like, depending on LLC or S Corp or C Corp, depending on how those businesses, if they don't match, depending on financial years and how those match calendar the the need for a new EIN for a partial year tax return, et cetera, there is some intricacies involved with, you know, that that it's it, it it's not outside the realm of possibility, depending on how the asset transfer, where was it going to sale, how do we look at, you know, from an EIN perspective, um, you know, I don't think we have enough detail to make the determination either way. Whether or not it is considered a net new business with zero history. 
Yeah, okay. I, I took your comment to to not recognize that there was a change of EIN, but you are recognizing that. So that clarifies. Yes, and it's it's clearly documented. If it was not documented, that's what it was. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm still hung up on the, the same sort of thing, and I just, I, I expound. For all we know, the current owner paid a discount price and any adversity is baked into that price. And that's why the rules are the rules. You know, I, I think the vision here is you had something operating prior to, you were negatively impacted and here we are, please help, right? But that's how this is different because that particular entity, which I, I'm in Concord and I'm, I'm trying to find damage, which I don't, I don't find it, but. Um, MMK. Uh, yeah, MMK. I found MMK. But, it's also outside but, of the application process. Oh, I know. I'm trying to wrap up your story. And your Understood. I, I just, wrap up your comments. I'm still hung up on the, you know, the operation may have been there prior to the pandemic, but are we meeting the four corners of what is contemplated by the ARPA program by giving to an entity that was created during the pandemic? Yeah. So it's, it's back to me for the last time and then Carl and then around until we finish. Um, I, I, I don't think this is an issue to change of ownership. The criteria says that the eligibility is the business existed Businesses are bought, businesses are sold, and the town of Wallenberg um, could have phrased the criteria differently. This is not an ARPIC issue. This is not an income tax issue. This is the town of Wallenberg setting its own criteria and trying to fulfill the intent of supporting businesses that have been here for a while, and maybe they're bought, and maybe they're sold, and maybe minority share becomes a majority share, and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter to me. It should matter to you, maybe, but it doesn't matter to me one little. If the business was there, it meets the criteria we were presenting it. The, the problem I have uh, is that I can't tell, I'm not totally persuaded this is a business that is currently, in present tense, it's in the, it, it's in our criteria, it's currently experiencing financial adversity given the increase in gross. That, that case has not been persuasively made to me, and to me, that's the key issue. Carl. Um, I land where you do, Mike. The MMK um, DBA, you're not going to find it in the Concord doing business as uh, organizational entities. These are trade name certificates. These are, these are of an application process to the, each municipality. Uh, whenever there's sales agreement and asset sales and purchases and business entity purchases, they go from owner X to owner Y. This is very standard. The entity existed. The entity continues to exist. It has, in my mind, uh, suffered sufficient amount of adversity during, uh, during the pandemic and during this period. The application was very thorough and they did a, an excellent job in, ter in terms of the narrative and the transcript. And I, I, uh, I view this application a very strong pass. I agree. Jacqueline, you agree? Yes. Move on to Chris. Chris. I'm willing to look over the, the in, my work, um, in my words, minor accounts and things. Mike? Pass. Jesse? Has everyone had two bites? Did you have two no, bites? Really Time to scope. Yeah, this year. 
A and F is here. Do you want to take that number four and that's yeah. 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 Can we because we just did bananas? Yep. This average score is on the front of the Okay. Okay. Um, I, should have, I should have asked uh, any recusals tonight on the agenda. We've got the recusals coming up. What do you got? Ada. Ada, the recusal on Ada. Um, Sarah Ann, did you catch that recusal? I see tax return. Three years worth. I don't see any documentation concerning how the money is going to be used. I see a list. I see some sort of a some sort of a list on how the money will be spent. Um, but a list is not, and, and I don't I don't infer that this is taken from a catalog or something like this. It seems to be very general rough estimates. And so I, I don't think that that complies. And so on that line of the, uh, of the scoring matrix, uh, the documentation line, which is the third one down, it's only worth 15 points, but um, I got the tax returns, that's very good. Um, the documentation on the other, um, it just isn't there. Um, what I see on A&F is that uh, a business that was hit by the pandemic and then it looks like it came back. The criteria is not whether or not there is a past adverse economic impact or a past adversity. The issue that we, the question that we were given is whether there is a current financial adversity. That's the standard. 
And so I look at these to find evidence of current financial adversity caused by the pandemic. Um, business financial results go up, they, they go down, an adverse impact from the pandemic can become mitigated as time goes on and whether or not this is one of those businesses that came back and there's no longer a financial adversity or a financial adversity that was caused by the pandemic continues to be problematic. Uh, the gross of this business from 2019 to 2021 uh, grew from $337,000 I'm rounding it to $425,000. I think it's very difficult in that situation to say, okay, we've suffered an adverse economic impact. It's mentioned in the application that the costs went up dramatically, uh, whether that's because of the pandemic or inflation or a combination of causes is a problem we have to wrestle with. The, I'm trying to figure out if this business is experiencing adversity because of the pandemic. Uh, I went through the tax returns a little bit and trying to figure out because, because the applicant said uh, it's in 2022, and you pull out the sentence that you know, sales drop and then there's consequences. That's my word, not, not in the application. But unfortunately, we don't have any documentation from 2022. And the prior two years, uh, kind of all that all that we have. But as far as the, the cost issue, or the additional cost of the business, the cost of goods sold, um, analyzing the tax returns, the cost of goods sold in 2019 was 31%. In 2020, it drops from 31 to 21. And in 2021, it rises to 28, the cost of goods sold, still below the 2019 level. So the burden of proof is on the applicant to, to, you know, to get himself into this arena where there's a current financial adversity. And so you know, what is the test of adversity? How much money can you, you know, do you make a certain level of money? Where does it take you out of adversity and into another arena where they're not experiencing a hardship? Um, it's a business like that they that they run, uh, and so that's where I think that's where I think this is. Um, as far as what they're going to do with the money. Um, I think some of these, some of the uses um, would help a long term, help strengthen the business long term. Um, and that's my first swing at it. That's my first swing at it. Who wants to take the next swing and then we'll go, but not you too, because you've already had the second swing. Mm -hmm. Someone on the other end of the table want to take the next, somebody. Oh, oh, you're up there. No, I'm refusing myself. Oh, you're refusing yourself. Yeah, Jacqueline. I mean, I know that every restaurant, you know, had a hardship during the pandemic. So, I, you know, I, I thought one would say, um, however, the degree wasn't as significant as other restaurants. Um, and, you know, the tax returns are all there. There's not much of an impact. I mean, there is an impact, but not much compared to other businesses. Like funding this application didn't really weigh all of the um, the guidelines required, I believe. So for me, this one was on the fence as well. Um, did COVID really impact the business? I mean, uh, you can probably uh, make more against that statement than for that statement. Um, as far as the degree um, that the proposed changes, the three changes that they outlined can indeed impact and um, help the business along for recovery. Well, yes, it's just a binary question. Um, that the budget is, uh, you know, it has enough documentation for that, it does not. Uh, and is it, is, you know, three items, can they be done within a year? Sure, it's again taken binary. Um, but this one for me was the margin for the case. So I'll, I'll sound like Chris's parrot again. 
I'm in the same boat. I mean, I think I, I look at it as a capital investment, what they're putting into the business, which, you know, if you start going into, you know, they, they, they hint at saying their application that uh, cost of supplies has impacted the business. So they didn't really demonstrate that to, to a degree I would like to see. Um, you look at what they're looking to do, and this would be the exact type of, you know, you're replacing AC, or AC repairs and replacing a cooler. So right there, that's capital investment, long-term viability for the business. Um, like I said, I passed this, but it's by the skinny, skinny of their teeth. Jesse? Um, I, I, I think the application is clearly appropriate. Um, you know, that's what their what their intended use is, is well spelled out. Again, I the um the, the, the list that was provided is somewhat broad and it would have been I would have liked to have seen some sort of a documentation of like what those things really cost because outside I'm I'm not a restaurant tour, I don't know what those things cost. Um you know, I, I kind of I also went and looked at the, you know, sort of like the percent uh, change in what the operating costs were, and you know, um, you know, it didn't really fall in line with what they had described. Although, you know, three percent across four hundred thousand dollars is, you know, a chunk change. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not as, as uh, I'm somewhat on the fence with this one as well. I also am on the fence. Um, you know, no doubt, restaurants during the pandemic uh, experienced loss, having to shut down. Um, but you know, having to move through 2021 to They do say two profits on us. I don't necessarily um, when that started completely. Um, I would have liked to see more documentation on the proposed budget for the project. Um, you know, and no doubt. Um, I have more favorable on this than the restaurant. Um, I didn't like, I don't know who owns the building, and we, one of the requests are that we needed an agreement from your landlord. I don't know if they own it or if they're the landlord, um, but we're supposed to see that if it's okay to do improvement. So we don't know if they have to be okay from the landlord to do that work. Again, I think that this is where <coughs> they should have asked for a follow up. I'm just saying that because, in my opinion, this is where we should have been given all this material to make a much more educated answer on some of these. Again, my book, too, this is right on the line. Because of, because of those things that were missing that I feel we should have seen in there. Craig. So the application does indicate that they were rent, and I, and I do concur that there's no corresponding information. You know, I'm, st I'm stuck on the first line, quite frankly. You know, the proposed project will address the negative economics. So ha has a negative economic situation been established here through the application? Assuming that it did, then getting to the next box, the degree that the pandemic created this situation. Well, I, I, if we haven't really identified um, a situation, then how can we even deal with the degree that the pandemic created the situation? That's, that's an assumption. I mean, the other three boxes, you know, long-term recovery, certainly infrastructure, um, improvements to a restaurant, although once again, we don't know that those would be able to be done. Um, you know, I do know that there is an attempt to do the front of the building. I don't know if where this property is that they would be able to apply for the WCI and uh, the Thought and Innovation Program for that. Um, oh, I'm seeing sorry, did that tell you? Yeah. Okay, all right, no, okay. Um, seafood and milkshakes, that's not how I would characterize Captain Seats, but anyway, um, <laughs> been there. Um, 
you know, the budget is obviously, as recognized earlier, going to budget based on some numbers. And, you know, I think what is attempted to be do, done here can reasonably be established in 12 months. But, you know, I, I did score this um, not passing. So, thank you for your service. Just second time around, only if you want it, Jacqueline. If you have nothing to add, then take a pass and we'll turn this for you. Um, pass. Pass. Anybody else? Just second to close Turn it in. Yep. Jack, Jack, is this here? Yes, sorry. You're welcome. What was it again? 53.13. 60? Yeah, 63. Okay. for healing, as that is the next one we're going to do. And we'll just do that one and the last one, uh, and then we'll go back to another business. Mike, you want me? I'll, I'll take a stab at this one. Let me finish it up and then. Um, <laughs> no refusals, right? Any refusals? Hearing none? Okay. Um, place for healing. Here's what I see. Uh, it seems to be owner owner operated uh, owner operated uh, holistic health coach energy medicine practitioner. Uh, I help people heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The impact um, the applicant says uh, I was not able to see clients in person and was unable to hold in person workshops. And she used the grant to create a better website an online presence to attract more clients. She needs help with the create systems and getting her, getting my work out more broadly, having a website, so on, so for email, social media, sort of a marketing uh, uh, notion. I think, I think that marketing is a, is a good solid uh, use. Um, there may be a proportionality problem, which I'll, which I'll get to, but uh, marketing does help a business recover. Um, the 
business had profits in 2019, lower profits in 2020, and a loss in 2021. Um, that, to me, is more of a classic uh, demonstrable adverse economic impact that clearly puts you in the ballpark of financial hardship, which is the criteria, adversity and hardship, the synonyms. So um, I see that here. Um, the, the, two, the two organizations that have provided tax returns, uh, one is doTERRA, make sure you take that out and don't, I think that's 2021. Um, and, and this is called doTERRA was included in there. Um, and the, the gross from doTERRA rather than a place for healing is included in the application. So don't get confused as to how that, how that works. Um, I think I saw all the schedules, all the tax data, so that's very good. The documentation supporting the grant request, again, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned, my personal view, that we're sort of throwing that out the window, um, that it no longer matters. Documentation to support a grant request, it just seems to no longer matter. And as long as they itemize something, whether it has a sound factual basis, I'm, I'm concerned that, hey, you know, put out a list of numbers and you get a good score. But in this particular case, it may be very difficult to get estimates or, or proposals or something, just the nature of how um, they want to use the money, how the Apple wants to use the money. Um, but nevertheless, um, I'm going to stick to my position that an effort should be made to get, you know, some outside numbers on documenting your grant request. A quote, an estimate, you know, something uh, from somebody in the business is to, even if it's by the hour, you know, some, um, some effort. But the issue here uh, for me also is proportionality. Um, from, if you assume, arguendo, that the baseline for the profits was 2019, now you go to 2020 and 2021. Um, you could you could say that comparing 20 and 21, the hit from COVID is about nine thousand dollars, going from the baseline of six thousand four hundred to half of that roughly in 2020. That's a loss of three thousand, and then a loss in 2021. Even if we attribute all that to COVID, it comes up to a grand total of nine thousand dollars. If the applicant is looking for 25. That is not proportionality. Uh, that goes into the windfall situation. So, um, because the numbers here are modest, it's easy to measure, and uh, and, um, and for that reason, um, the application has a problem. I, I, I see an impact. I think it's caused by COVID. I think that's that's clear. Um, proportionality is a problem, but the uses as listed, I think, are strong, and the documentation has a problem. So, Carl. Um, I generally the application is weak. Uh, I see uh, the adverse impact. My question would be to this applicant if they were here, why didn't she have a tele, you know, ma uh, tele, uh, telehealth um, ability beforehand and that platform before she, before asking for it now to enhance the business? Um, the, the adverse impact was not as great. Um, in my opinion, uh, and it speaks to your professionality question, uh, answer and idea. Um, also, uh, I don't think, I think she could have gone a little bit more in depth in terms of the uh, documentation that we were doing. Um, do you want me to tell you if it's a pass or a fail? Whatever you want. For me, Put it's your own style it, in it. Uh, you got a lot of it, but you know. Below, it, it, for me, it, it's well below the, uh, the threshold for pass. Okay. Jackie? Um, for me, I also had a difficult time with our application and I guess question of the therapist uh, initially Zoom was free for the hour sessions. Um, Zoom was I think only $19 a month at the time. So um, there's an online presence. We quickly switched over and adapted to what we had to do. Um, so 
So it was, I mean, if you had a computer, if you had a cell phone, then at least you were able to do the work that you needed to do. So for me, I don't, um, I think it's maybe more of a lack of effort. So for me, I mean, I wasn't interested. So I'll echo what sounds like just far, but also add in you know, the, the, the Wallingford element. Um, there is, uh, I don't want to say it's lacking something. When you have a brick and mortar store, it's Wallingford, it's you know, physical location, etc. There is a location here, and, and that's fine, but in the expansion or the get well plan for this organization, it's all about the enhanced online presence, which is not just Wallingford. It's all about email blasts and blitz and marketing to uh, as many people as that budget could possibly uh, address, which is not necessarily Wallingford. I would like, I would have liked to have seen more detail in the social media expansion as it pertains to Wallingford instead of leading it up to my imagination. Mike, so uh, I also failed this. <laughs> I'm going to pair it tonight. No, I <laughs> no, one thing I struggled with, like the last one, to agree to propose timeline and complete it within 12 months with no real details. There's no, you know, an email from someone saying, I'll help you with social media, I'll do, you know, whatever sort of marketing advice would help. I struggled with that one and also just the fact that you know you have a bunch of numbers but nothing really backing it up um i'm done on scoring this one I, I gave it a 40. so i think i'm one one's in yes. so um you know i'm not i'm not as i'm not as uh i'm, I'm not as uh, negative on this one as other folks are i am um, I kind of see that the, the nature of this business is a little bit outside the Zoom realm. And I do understand part of it, part of it, outside the Zoom realm. Um, and I do understand that, like, based on the way that their money declined over time, that, that obviously was related to a lot of clientele. And so without there being the ability to get walk-ins in a business like this, you have to go online. You have to go, you have to have a website presence. You have to have the ability to generate emails inside Wallingford, outside Wallingford. But if the business is in Wallingford, you know, bananas, ice cream sells ice cream to everybody. You know? um, so does Cat and Steve, right? So everybody goes up and down to in and out of Wallingford. To me, um, the, the areas that we're lacking were the, things that you had mentioned, the lack of the details. However, only one of the businesses that we're going to review tonight actually provided estimates on things that and what they actually cost. Everyone else just listed it. In this case, they're broad. Um, but I, you know, I, I mean, you know, here you have a business that's been there for seven years and clearly, you know, by the by the by 2021, um, they've taken quite a big hit. So, you know, to me, I, I, I do I hear all of your your, uh, your I hear all your critiques and I and I and I you know and I'm listening to them all you know um, with open with an open mind but I I didn't look at I, I didn't frown upon this one as much as other people. Um, likewise, along lines of Jesse, how because if you go line by line for the questions, yes, they were impacted by COVID. Um, they got from financial adversity and they had to spend. Um, the degree that the project was just a little bit long term recovery. Um, yes, it's not a temporary fix. Um, and the proposed budget is appropriate and supported by Dr. Nation. The thing about the items that they um, detail here is you can spend as much money as you have on marketing and websites. Never enough, but you can always find more. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big hole. Um, and the timeline is, is sure you can get thumbs up on the phone once, but you get a whole website, depends on how big your website is. Um, so, 
I, I recognize the impact of the Wallace and Focus. There's no discussion of the Wallace principles that they have and they have online so that they can be anywhere. Um, and the fact that the grant is more than they ever made since the new fall into the line of rainfall. So I initially rated it higher than I um, appreciated in others' comments. Thank you. Uh, so I have more. <laughs> I don't think this is a quality application for all the reasons stated before, except I have a couple of questions on that. The status letter that we received, and not just for not just for this one, but this is a personal status letter, not a business status letter. It explains to me the difference. This is personal. So we don't care about the personal, we want the business status letter. And not just for this application. I already graded it, I've already gone. Am I right or wrong on that? What do we want? I don't have. Let, let me just look at the criteria. I don't know if you find memory. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Well, he's looking for that. I'm yeah. also concerned about. I can't. I don't know if this entity is alive. Is this still, this, if this business is still in business. Oh. They forfeited their. Um, on Secretary of State's website, they forfeited it. It's gone. They received two letters from the Secretary of State that it's over with. They, uh, they just dissolved it. So I have an issue with that. Do we look at that? Do we, I mean, this is where, if they have a letter at the Secretary of State's office that's involved because they haven't been doing their paperwork, do we form on those type of applications? Because to me, that's enough. And I'm just not saying this application, but I'm saying if we see something down the road, we haven't seen all the applications yet. If that has happened for whatever reason and there's a mistake at the state or whatever, what do we do? If we fail them, but they have a letter or is it not really dissolved? You have to do it there. I'm not going to answer that. No, but I'm just saying it's sort of rhetorical, weigh it into your score. Yeah, but I'm just saying that these are things that we need to take a look at as we go down the list here. Um, and I have to I printed it out and everything of that nature. And I can't find this business online anyway. Did I, I don't know if anybody looked for it. Okay. So it could be a DBA. So that's why. Because if there is a new business, then I'll just say they are doing business under uh, one word, I, one of the things I can't say here is when public. And if this entity could be operating under a trade name certificate were to file with the town clerk's office and they're in the process of converting those over to conference. That's not done yet. Um, I thought that the personality argument, I appreciate that. Um, I totally agree. Um, I was looking forward to, and I'm glad that I heard Jackie on this because I know she's in the industry. Um, you know, just like being a lawyer, you know, we had to shift. You know, I wasn't doing stuff online before the pandemic that much, you know, Zoom and that kind of stuff. And I had to go out and buy three different packages and, you know, for different mediums and, you know, and, and we survived because of that. So, you know, now to do that with this money, I just don't say it's like, okay, money's available. I'm going to try and get it. So I did for this quite well. Um, I, uh, I understand the argument that Craig you, you just made and, and Jackie made. I have a slightly different perspective on it. And it can certainly mark down uh, an applicant because um, the timeline doesn't make sense or the budget is not appropriate, meaning out of whack in amount or we can mark it down because there's no documentation, but I, I I, personally will not mark it down because I want the business to run the way I want it to run. It should run the way it wants to run. Yeah. And it, if her business model or the Apple's business model doesn't serve with mine, my, my thoughts are irrelevant on that. So I'm just looking at the criteria. Um, I think this is the kind of business we'd like to help. Um, you know, it's struggling. It was obviously uh, hit, and sure, you can criticize maybe the business model, things like that. It's just not why I would reduce the score. I think the application has you know, problems, I, but that isn't one of them. I didn't think. Uh, let's go around 
if you have anything to add or what you know add it otherwise I'd like to respond. So going around uh, to Mike Liv and Jesse and Bob very I just, um, yeah. you know I think what you just said though is exactly why the forty point possibility on the second scoring box should be basically close to a zero because we may be filling that hole temporarily, but if this business, I mean, there's no evidence that it's a long term thing. So, we all set. So, I'll fill out the sheets. Kind of. Make sure we get a mandatory no, 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 no. application and, and we've had some serious um, discussion about grading uh, nonprofits. So, so how do we that particular that particular application uses a social security number you will not find it on time? Yeah. Yeah. It's blocked off. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. You ready to move on? The last one is Alyssa's. <coughs> And this is Kate Lee. Um, here's what I see on a on a list is Kate Lee. Um, just first a general observation um, that the smaller you are as a business, the more more vulnerable you are to setbacks. Um, the larger you are, the more you can absorb it. And that goes to the issue of whether or not you're experiencing uh, financial adversity caused by the pandemic. Um, some businesses um, are at, a, at such a level of um, income and profitability that you could say, well, they've recovered, they've clawed their way back. Other businesses are still in the fragile stage and they get hit with COVID and maybe they don't get out of that fragile stage. And there's not a bright line, it's sort of a gray area. Um, when do the effects of COVID still stay with you? And, uh, these are part of my personal views on, on Alyssa's bakery. Um, so here's what I see. I see a, a business, again, it's really only operated. Let me just, um, in the beginning, in January, um, one full-time employee, and now there's two. The, the business did recover to some degree. In 2019, the net profit was 34000 690 and it went up over 50 in 2021. Um, so it did recover. I guess the reason why my initial comments is did it recover enough to get you out of the danger zone? And so I, I guess I'm forecasting that I'm, I'm going to give a passing grade to the financial adversity question, which for me is the key for the whole thing. If you're not experiencing financial adversity, you shouldn't get any money. Um, and if that adversity is not caused by the pandemic, you shouldn't get any money. But I, I think uh, this applicant clears the bar barely, but it clears the bar. Um, the gross income has also recovered. 
uh, nicely from 2019 to 2021. Um, I do believe that we were given tax returns. Good. And we also got probably the most detailed documentation supporting the grant request we may ever see. Um, so on that one, on the documentation, I gave a maximum of 15 out of 15 points. And I just draw a contrast between this and some other applications that really made no effort to provide documentation. And those applications that made no effort to provide documentation, when it was, wasn't that time consuming to get it, I gave them a low score. Well, this one, the documentation was there, the tax returns are there. Um, so therefore the budget seems to make uh, a ton of sense. And um, what the applicant intends to do is not so complicated or dependent upon like governmental approvals or things like that. I, I see as well within the applicant's control. So the last two lines have been extremely strong scores. Um, and because um, I see the applicant still in the financial adversity category, even though the gross and the profits have gone up, because the applicant is small and and and, and more vulnerable, vulnerable um, this is going to get a pretty decent score um, from me. And I think for now, that's all I got. Carl? Um, <clears throat> this is an application where there's a lot of detail. There's, there's receipts, there's invoices, there's an inventory and itemization. Um, they provided uh, Schedule C's. Uh, they, the rationale is right there. Um, you know, I, this is to me emblematic of the kind of business we should be passing right through. This, for me, received a strong score. Pass. I agree. Strong pass. You get paid by the word, you know. Strong pass. Yeah, this is the highest grade I had for, for tonight. I mean, it's, it was a very good application. Yeah, I um, I, I, uh, uh, I think the drop from 19 to 20 characterizes what the financial hardship was. Uh, I think 20 to 21 they bounced back, but I agree with everybody here that the um, the application itself was well filled out, documented, and um, yeah. I, I have uh, my, I, I guess my only. Uh, my only my only holdup is actually the second one the degree to which the COVID nineteen created or contributed to demonstrating clearly the stress financial adversity of business experiencing. I don't doubt that. I just don't know how well she necessarily made the case outside of the financials that were provided. Um, but I didn't. That wasn't a great limiting factor for me. That was just the only area that I kind of saw it um, lacking. Um, I made note that she said. She she experienced a shutdown of revenue loss of three thousand dollars a month. So to me, that to me describes financial adversity. <laughs> I, I I agree, but I don't I didn't necessarily see it in the uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, reduce um, uh, twenty for what you were saying. Twenty. Um, you know, where would they be if they didn't get shut down? Right. Like, would she have been able to do all the stuff that she was just uh, detailing now? Appreciate all the documentation here, and um, um, I yeah, it, and, and Mike mentioned this too. Looking at how, whether they recovered or not, um, I think that's a sign of a, of a good business going forward that we should support. And whether they experienced a loss in 2020 and 2021 is something that I really put a lot of weight on because whether they've recovered now or not, you know, we're in an inflationary and with new challenges. Yeah, I'm going to concur. This is my highest score one also. The only thing is we keep mentioning this about the backup material. I can tell you that I know that at some point there were some people who were in the administration or consultants that were saying you do not need backup material, just have it ready if they ask for it. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm just saying, so we should got to keep that in the back of our mind. And then again, we're not asking for anything. So that's, I just want that to be aware because some of these applications will be pretty good. And then you're going to say, well, they don't have the documentation. Well, they might not have been asked for it. 
or told that they needed to present it. Thank you. I said for, 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 this is, I did, this is a high task. I just want to be aware of what happened here. Okay. So I agree it was a well put together application. Um, you know, three thousand dollars a month. I expect that they're talking about uh, growth and not net um, here. So when I look at the trend, the the gross 2019 at 175, um, understandable dip in 2020, but then in 2021, they're at, what is that, a 40% from the 2019. So if you figure 20% increase in business growth per year, the way the numbers are shaking out, they're generally sort of exactly where I, I would expect them to be. You know, they've doubled their employee staff compared to pre-pandemic. Um, so I don't know that we actually have shown a financial adversity presently. Um, they did get a PPP loan um, during, you know, to, to help float them. That was forgiven. It wasn't huge. It was like six grand. Um, but, you know, that kept the business going, you know, that being said, I did score it the highest of what we've done today, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't make the bar that we set last time, um, you know, so I did score, you know, the proposed budget, you know, the backup, the documentation, I gave 15 on that. Um, you know, the timeline is wishy-washy, you know, I guess it could be done at any time. I, I gave a 10 on that. Um, uh, but the, the top two, you know, the financial adversity is experiencing is expressly in that. And I, I couldn't give max points there. So I gave a 50%. I mean, I, I really don't see any present financial adversity I agree. Good application appears to be a good business, but you know that's my comment. Hold on. Somebody said something I want to respond to, and I'm mine. I want to make a note, so I guess I'm done. Uh, second time around the table. Anybody have anything to add? All right, let's start on and pass it on. All right, I just want to correct something I said. They just made it on the floor. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, I, I added it. This yeah. Time. <laughs> Ready? So while we're waiting for that to it's happen, uh, yeah, let's wait for it. For this, 73, Mac and me 100, Lidden, 85, Regan, 95, Carl, 92, Amy, Walsh, 100, and Gross, 80, and Reynolds, 85. Because we want everybody's name read at the score, correct? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that you should have that number. Okay. Yeah. 86.67. So, what I um, would propose is that um, we pass a Motion. Then Amy, did you? Are you all done with the last envelope? Let me pass a motion that says that today the following applications were approved and the following applications were not approved, all in one combo motion, because that's consistent with our with our understanding, and that'll be the basis for reporting up to government. Does that procedurally bother anybody? And we can okay. I vote to make a motion to authorize the chair to report the government that Melissa's Cakery and Bananas Ice Cream were approved, A&F Cafe, and Amy 
Amy's takes in a place for healing were denied. Good. Um, can I ask you to change it to recommended and not recommended? Because strictly speaking, that's all we're entitled. Recommended. To. Yeah, so I'll clarify that. Show recommended instead of. Yep, because we have no power to. So okay. maybe some picky in council would say you have no power to approve. And then, you know, recommended and not recommended. Yeah, recommended and not recommended. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, all in all in favor to say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Okay, that is unanimous. The last piece of business that we got to do is. Um, Decide upon the pass fail score for nonprofits that are engaged in programming. And if you could get that up on your screen, um, I just left the meeting. Oh, I hope I didn't. Right, you're still here. I'm still here. I see you. You're still there. <laughs> We've got to get up the evaluation forms for nonprofits. I have that on the screen share. Yeah, I believe that's it. And that is the form that. The first line was 50 points, right? We have, we all have it up. We got to decide how we're going to rank these. Um, the going down, down to the last line is the program ready to implement? If not, the timeline will the program be completed. Um, a bad program can be ready to implement and the timeline can be, you know, can be done before October 31. Uh, I just point that out that if, and the same thing with the budget, the proposed budget is appropriate, supported by documentation, high percentage of requested funds being used for direct costs, and so on and so forth. So if, if the criteria is too close to 50, you can have a bad, stinky program and have get very high scores on the two bottom line, on the two bottom lines. And money is given out when maybe it shouldn't be. So what I'm arguing for, or not arguing, but what I'm advocating for is a pretty high score um, on that, um, for our criteria. So you should, you should, have a strong score in that first row. You really need a strong score in that first row and then add in, you know, what might happen if they have a good budget and a good timeline. Where do you, where do you want to end up? Um, so it's very likely these will be quality applications because they're masters at grant completion. Yeah, I mean, the few that I looked at, you know, some are some are pretty strong, but who wants to take the first swing at what might be a passing score? Oh, you mean in terms of metrics? In terms of, yeah, that would be. I think 75. 75. Because I would think if you're going to lower the first line, it's going to somehow impact the second and third line. So even if you maxed out the second and third line, 50, you gotta at least get 50% on the, the top line. I have no, I have no quarrel with that. Yeah. I'm just sort of, um, that's, that's, that's is there any other, uh, everyone can live with uh, 75? I think for the non for profits they should, they should do all well. I think that the, um, I think I agree with that. I think they do a lot of the work for the town in terms of aid and support. I think I think seventy. Uh, I would think for sixty-five because we, it depends on how you got if we're gonna look at this. But I'm thinking that they do do a lot of work. You can take one out one because there's only three categories, and just take one category first and somehow. Um, I don't know. 
that's just my opinion on it, and that's we're just throwing it out there. But I think 65 is a sort of a not for profit because they do so much of the town potentially. I don't, you know, haven't, we haven't seen them all yet, but we've seen most of them. Most of them are worth it. I, I just, I, I, your, your rationale is on board. I think the, the score is too low for me. I think I'm very comfortable with the seven. Well, let's go around the table. Um, I'm going to go in the middle with uh, 68. I mean, some of the nonprofits that I was reading through, I know we talked about this last time that it, it also benefits other towns. So as long as that comes into the scoring. Um, if I could talk about that for a minute, because I've had some conversations with, with the town about that. And it is not a first on the on the federal level, which we're not dealing with. On the federal level, there's no requirement that, um, the, the, that, the, that the grant funds of the nonprofit serve only Wallingford. It's, a, it's discretionary with us and the town council and the mayor. It's, it's just you know, what we want to do. But clearly, there's some nonprofits that um, serve people out of town, and there's some nonprofits that we can control that it's only serves Wallingford residents. And I'll give you an example, because this is coming up. There is at least one nonprofit that provides general programming. Uh, and at the same time, they may be charging a fee for that programming. And it may be the only way around a administrative headache is to fund tuitions to these programs. When you fund tuitions, you have the name and address of the applicant. And even though the grant is not put to us this way, if we can pick out the, the amount they're asking for for tuition, we could limit the grant to that and condition it upon tuition for Wallingford residents and not have the problem of a nonprofit spreading its services to you know, 80% Wallingford, but 20% out of town. And we'll never know the true percentage. We just never will. And in some cases, people come into the nonprofit, and the nonprofit doesn't exclude them because just because they're out of town. And it's impossible to prorate what's out of town and what's in town. It's just impossible to do. So we, we just take it into account, as I think that when you were saying to your point, that in the scoring, we would have to make a rough judgment on, on that and maybe reduce the grant or something, you know, subject to our vote and our, and our discussion. But it, it can get in, it can get involved. So for me, I would go lower and you know the I mean the big nonprofits, we know they don't have really proficient grant writers. The smaller grassroots um, nonprofits probably their applications aren't going to be as clean and clear cut. Yeah. So I think I would go lower because we do provide a lot for our town. So 65, 68. 65 or 68 is what you said, Chris. It was 69. Come on. I got a bit of um, <clears throat> a big one. So, from my perspective, if I'm taking some bottom line, if the program is not ready to implement, is the timeline of the goal will be completed before October 2020? Uh, if you are not able, some degree of that uh, and have a reasonable expectation. You know, that's a, again, to throw in the word binary, that's a is it or is it not? And it's really not a sliding scale as to, 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 to bring this. Uh, but it may be a situation where you have you know, people want to build the wing, et cetera, to, to something. So, you know, there may be construction delays. Any other things that are outside the, the realm of, of possibility, um, you know, does it have a clear purpose? Do we have the expected outcomes? Are they satisfying the Wallingford? That's the subjective one. And if there's, if we're using our own, you know, let's say um, an organization of Wallingford and Marion, Connecticut, um, you know, in, in proportion, and we're not asking for them specifically to give us. You know, that specific set of those funds, knowing that they'll be put to greater good regardless. Um, you know, I still think the bar um, should be set fairly high in that you need to have at least two 
look at criteria, one being very strong, which is different than as well as another, and there's some reasonableness, which is why it's still to that 75 um, range um, as a personal opinion. Mike? What's that theme tonight? So I, I'm putting on my hat when what I do you wear tomorrow. I, I, I know we're, we're going to coordinate. Um, I'm firm on 75. I will not. I think it needs to be that. I agree with a lot of points that Chris made. The fact that you know that's a strong application then at a 75. You think of it. You're, you're relying on two of the criteria, and you know the largest one we're talking about over 50 percent, or you know it could be mixed together. Um, and I just think of my days when I have to spend a week doing my brick FEMA application reviews, which I usually get stuck in Louisiana and Florida reviewing applications from those states. And yeah, there's sometimes that you see things come in. Like I said, you would assume, oh, everyone has on the same playing field, and it's not. Um, I, I just feel that it should be 75, and I, I, I will not support anything lower than 75. Jesse? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I feel about a score. I, I think I'll probably just go with the majority. I mean, honestly, what we have to kind of keep aware of is we set it at 65 or 75 or 69. We're all going to have that number in our head. And if we see something that we want to fund, then we're going to have to say to ourselves, well, it has to be above that anyway. So, Inherent in the yeah, I mean, it's, it's baked in there. So, I, I mean, I would almost look at it like you would. I've not looked at all the applications yet, but I would almost argue that you might need a little bit more of a strict criteria for these versus the business ones because you're talking about more money and you're talking about more in depth proposals, perhaps. And so maybe a lower score wouldn't necessarily be as good as a higher score in this case. But that being said, I will bend to the majority. I don't really well, I'm going to put you on the spot in about four minutes. But okay. Um, you need a bigger dollar grant than those business ones, so therefore I think this would be helpful with the higher standards, which is why I'm going to use like higher and 75 is good for you because the 25 25 limit is at least half the 50 or some less. Can you put something on the agenda later? It's possible to explain a portion of Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. How the mechanism of that? Yeah, the mechanism, it, 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 the short answer is the mechanism is whatever we devise, you know, through our usual compromise and discussion and debate. So the remedies are purely up to us. But I will give you a real life example. There, there is an applicant. I've seen a couple where they throw the kitchen sink. Exactly. Yeah. There, there is an, I'm, so I'm going to make this up as a hypothetical ripped from the headlines based on a true story. Okay. There is an applicant looking for a, a lot of money that is, it's not a hardship application, and we're not talking about a hardship application. This is a program application. So the nonprofit could be very well healed. So they, they have a program. And, and, if, and, and if it's not a hardship application, their programming has to be directed to the most needy. So if you remember from last week, you, you can't have the Wallace Country Club putting in a, a new practice putting in. Because hypothetically, the Wallace Country Club has got a lot of dough. Therefore, the people that the money is going to help has to be the most needy. Okay. So if you have an applicant who um, has some uh, has some programming, and that looks good. The the programming is going to help a mixed multitude, however. Um, you know, wealthy, middle, and needy, and it's impossible to sort that out, except through tuition, except through tuition. And they've also thrown in some capital stuff. It's a serious question in my mind, they're not eligible for the capital because it's not a hardship application. It has to be programming for those who need it most. So to the extent they throw in, you know, uh, you know 12,000 for, repairs or maintenance or something like that that doesn't directly relate to the programming we're going to have to call that out if we so vote and and i think there's more than one application where we have to do that and actually scrutinize the many items that they're looking for and to make sure you know and 
And if we can't do that, because we don't have seven votes, if we can't agree on how to call out the, 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 the non-needy programming stuff, then they get a lower score, I guess. But we can craft any way we want. We just can't, we can, no, that's not true. We can reduce them. We can't increase the grants, but we can make an award conditional upon, like we'll give you uh, $50,000 conditioned upon it being for tuition to these programs, and but only if they put tuition in the application. We can't make force them to grant tuition. But if they say, yeah, we're, we're going to have tuition benefits anyway, then we'd say, well, that's all you get. We're just limiting the tuitions, you know, and cat food for their Cheshire cat that's in the kitchen, you know, that's because they're hungry. But that's, um, that's how we would, hopefully, hopefully I address that. Sure. You can talk about that, but just come up, I'm up, I'm going to be fine. Okay. I'm still for 65. Okay. Um, just, it was mentioned that some of the not for profits, might have some good grant writing and so forth, and some I'm sure do. The council at the last approximately two weeks before the applications were due changed the requirements and it opened the door for some other. I just want this to be out there so people know this. So, approximately two weeks before Thanksgiving week, they approved a lower bar to apply, and some applicants came in under that. And so they had to do their applications within two weeks of this. So we just need to be aware of that. I don't know how we can tell which ones work, but there are, and that again, we can't ask that we're, you know, but this again, some of them were not, did not have time to do applications. Craig voted against that. It's, it doesn't make a difference, it passed the council. I just wanted to say that. I don't know if Before he, he said it. I don't know if he did or didn't, doesn't make a difference. It passed and they allowed these other applications to come in. No, it wasn't that. It had to do with documentation. Right. But, it allowed, but, but, yeah. but the documentation allowed other groups to apply. They couldn't apply before. What number are you favor? Six, six, five. Six, five? Six, five. Okay, six, five. Because of some yeah, of these that. Right. So, I'm at the 75. I agree with Jesse and Amy and I think someone else might agree. Because we're dealing with so much more money, potentially. Um, and, and looking at that big block of 50, you know, we know a lot of these nonprofits. We know they know what they're doing, and they can easily show that they have the ability to run the program. A lot of those are going to get picked off automatically. So, uh, I mean, I, I think those. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable with seven five. Okay. So what I want to do. This is not a vote. This is a straw poll. So we know how to craft a motion. I want to go around the table and pick one of three numbers, and I'm sort of imposing or or. Your fourth choice is I protest, Mike. I don't want to play the game. But the game I want to play is to go around the table and pick either 65, 70, or 75 as to what closest represents where you're at on the score. Or if you have another answer, just throw it in. But we need to narrow this down as so we can make a vote and, and, um, and move forward. So I hope you say 65, 70, or 75, pick one. I it's not a vote. This is a sort of straw poll. I'm going to pick 70. They may have the the most prolific grant writers, but they arguably may have the greatest need and impact. 70, the pro. I'm going to go 70. 75. 75. Uh, pass. Pass. 70? Pass. P A S S. I want to pass. Oh, pass. Yeah. Okay. That's not the choice. He said he doesn't want to play the game. He doesn't want to play the game. game. You gave him an out. I already got my ball. What's going on? 75. 75. Okay. And I said before I went into majority, so I'll say 75. Yeah. I'm, I'm, leaning, to, I'm leaning to 75. Um, but everyone now sees where the landscape is. So. Um, it, it, it looks like well, let's let's do it this way. What's the average? I think it's it's worth taking the average. So let's do this. Um, let's eliminate sixty five. Who who had sixty five? You did, because it seems to have no chance of passing. Okay. And now the choice is between seventy and seventy five, and uh, I want I just want to quickly go. 
around the planet. Yeah. Carl, 70 or 75? 70. 70. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, 70, yeah. Okay, okay. Mike is 75. Okay. 75. This is not in order. 75. Oh, I see 75. 75? You can live with 75? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. 75. 70. 70. I'll go 70. 75. 75. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion that we uh, make 75 and above. The score by which an application will be approved or recommended. So the motion I'm making that motion that it, it, it is so 75. For nonprofits. For nonprofits. Nonprofits programming program 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 program. 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 the hardship because the hardship is a different matrix completely. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'll second that. Okay. So now we're gonna um, so the motion on the table, Carl, is 75. We want a yes or a no to see if we have your vote. I'm just going down alphabetically. You're asking uh, yes or no? Yeah. No. Carl was a no. Jacqueline? No. I, I didn't do that right. But this was the same you know. I, I didn't mean to go around the table. So Mike Berdinsky is a yes. Craig Fishbaum yeah. is a yes. Bob? We're Rob Fritz, absent. Mike Glidden. Yes. Mike Glidden is a yes. Bob Gross is a no. No. Uh, Jacqueline was a no, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris Regan? Yes. He's a yes. Jesse? Yes. Yes. And Amy? Yes. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have eight people here. No. Nine. nine. We have nine people here. Five is a majority, and a super majority is six. And we had six votes. One, two, three, four, four, five, six. What? Four, five, six. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. No, not, we don't need them if we don't have a full. If someone is absent. Because we, we went in deep. He asked for the clarification on that. Yeah, we went to the council for clarification on that. I recall that, but I, I defer. You were texting somebody. Probably. <laughs> I don't recall. Probably well, Mike. No, I, well, I, well, I, it's, it's not definitive. I, I, I firmly thought it's that. No, I went back to the county. We had a discussion. What happens if there are recusals or absences? How do we, and it's impossible to get seven votes because of the absence of recusal. And by vote in, uh, in October, um, I was authorized to go to the council and come up with a formula to take into account recusals or absences, still keeping a super majority. But it wasn't a hard number, and um, there's that's a matter of time. Okay. Yeah. So a nine are voting, five is a majority, six is a super majority, and we have six votes. And if you want me to send you something on that, I can. So it's seventy-five and above. The most Raven was said, "I'll trust but verify." So that takes care of that. Um, let me just. Check some stuff. Um, you did memorialize that. The council voted to go with the It's it's uh, nine o'clock. Um, Bob Gross wanted to raise something. We can put ten minutes into it, or I'm not sure what he's going to do. Nine minutes. I don't know. Nine minutes. Um, does everybody have ten minutes left in here? Okay. I don't know what he was going to raise. Uh, does anyone have any questions or any ideas? I'm just very concerned about the incomplete application. So I know we just said that. I just, I think it's unfair to those that did and comply and those that didn't. You know, I don't want to. In, you know, have an adverse inference because they didn't comply because they were looking, they didn't want us to know the truth, right? So that is, that is a natural takeaway. Um, and I, I just, I understand, I understand. Well, um, 
the application is incomplete. There, I think there's serious stuff and there's non-serious stuff. Serious stuff, they don't provide tax returns. Who, 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 does, who can't do that? I mean, it's, it's in there in black and white and writing when they fill out, when they fill out the application, it is there. It's a requirement. By golly, I mean, you have requirements for a reason. But if somebody comes and, forward with a fantastic application yeah. and a fantastic budget right. and a fantastic everything, but they have no backup, it is zero in their category. But, but based upon the scoring that we've yeah. been doing, that's they're going to get all the money. Well, that's what we voted. I, I understand. And the, the absence of tax returns may may uh, uh, cause some doubt in one's mind as to whether it really is a you know, financial adversity or financial hardship. And that doubt should be reflected in the score. That's why my scores are generally lower than your scores, is because I have doubt. Uh, on financial literature. There's a gray area. And I'm not so sure that these guys are ever going to do any better in their business than they're doing now. Even if we give them the grant money and, you know, they have some project that's going to be a long-term, you know, solution, I doubt whether they're ever going to improve, they reach the maximum. I just don't know. So I'm not going to give a strong score if I doubt. I'm alone on that. That's why we have 10... No, I score lower than anybody else. You know, I swear but, I think that's where the lack of backup can, should, I think, implicate, a, you know, suggest a lower score. I didn't see that tonight, but someone asked for, you know, $25,000, and with any care, with any degree of reasonableness, they could get some kind of an estimate or proposal or something. They don't bother to do it. They just, just don't bother to do it. I just assert so, that I agree to the 70s. Yeah. The understanding that we had complete packages from the team. So, it ain't, ain't happening. You're going to see more of I, I know. Welcome to the world. Um, we've got eight minutes left. You had a concern. And I put I'm you on. off. It was about 45 minutes ago. I don't know. I don't remember. What the concern you said was. you wanted to sure. talk about it. Later. Yeah. I, don't so, remember, I don't remember what we were talking about. I have the most. And then the last question. Is it too late that we can't ask for some backing material from some of these groups or businesses? Yeah. No. It's too late. And it's too late. We've already started this. Yeah, we decided this. In our I think of anything, Craig, it's your, your role in the council. It's so it's probably due by this message. But we can't do anything because we, we can't. have already. So Berginsky made a motion to adjourn. And all of you get bad marks because you didn't see that I just spelled it on the first agenda. But it's been spelled correctly on all the other agendas. Motion is seconded by Craig. Anyone opposed? No. Or John. Right. Well, John.